Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Feel the air flowing into your nostrils, sliding as a current of coolness down the back of your throat, cascading down your windpipe and filling your lungs. Feel it escaping as warm as blood pouring out from you into the world. Your breath is your life. Sometimes we become conscious of it. Most of the time it's something that happens to us, for us, through us. Unthinkingly we breathe. And like our breath, our life is drawn from the world around us, gathered together for a short period into our bodies and then dissipates back into the currents and eddies of our surroundings. From dust we have come, to dust our bodies return. For a brief moment dust becomes flesh and blood before rejoining the soil from which it came. And in that moment called life we breathe. Each breath is a parable of the brevity and fragility of our lives as a whole. Each breath is a parable of our belonging to and our dependence upon the whole web of creation. Each breath is a sharing in the life that unites the whole community of earthlings, a manifestation of our common bond in receiving what's necessary to live as a gift that sustains us and which is a gift we pass on to others. The Hebrew scriptures weave these insights into the very language used to speak of human being. The Hebrew word ruach means at once breath, life, wind and spirit, both the particular little s spirit, that is my life, your life, and the capital S spirit of God, the source and sustainer of life for all. To be alive, according to the creation story and the second chapter of Genesis, is to be drawn from the earth and mingled with Ruach, the breath or spirit of God shed by all the living. We are wind-powered lumps of soil, according to this narrative. So if we take this account seriously, not as history or biochemistry, but as a metaphor to live by, as an image to nourish our moral and theological imagination, then true spirituality is not to be opposed to being creaturely, to being physical, to being bodily. Spirituality is not found in escape from or transcendence over the material conditions of life. Instead, to be spiritual, according to Holy Scripture, is to be carried along realizing that life is a gift that's received and shared, not an achievement to be grasped or, or hoarded. To be spiritual, to, to be in touch with God's ruach, the divine wind, the breath of life, is to embrace our creatureliness, our embodied, finite and vulnerable experience. It's to be mindful of our common reliance on what's given to us and to be shared by all. It's to be thankful and generous participants in all the various exchanges necessary for existence on a shared planet. To be spiritual is to be alive and to respect the life in others. To breathe in and breathe out. And we breathe in what others have breathed out. If I breathe in smoke from my neighbour's cigarette, I share, willingly or not, in that destructive habit. And if I am breathing out hatred, fear, greed, indifference, then my neighbours choke on that. To be spiritual is to avoid making my neighbour choke on my exhaust. And of course, here we find the point where metaphor becomes reality. Technology gives to this spiritual language of shared breath an empirical manifestation. What we each contribute to the global atmosphere is not merely what we personally exhale, but the accumulated emissions of all our activities, the atmospheric residue of the energy systems on which we rely. This too is a spiritual matter. Are we respecting the breath we share with our neighbours if we are polluting the air with noxious toxic discharges? Are we in tune with God's Ruach if we are changing the composition of the planetary pool of gas, altering the blanket of warmth and wind, making life more difficult for all our planetary neighbours through rapidly heating the globe? The Apostle Paul says, love does no harm to a neighbour. Yet our failure to reform a system reliant on burning coal, oil and gas is choking the future for all of us. 
by changing the atmosphere and so disrupting the stable climate on which human civilization is built, we are harming neighbours we may have never met. Neighbours on the other side of the world, neighbours not yet born. We know it's rude and antisocial to dump our rubbish in our neighbour's backyard or in the local creek, but as a society, we allow certain immensely profitable corporations to dump their rubbish into the one atmosphere we've got. It doesn't have to be this way. The good news is that God's holy ruach, God's spirit, can be a fresh wind blowing away old habits, scattering obsolete assumptions, dispelling illusory ambitions. God's spirit can be a fresh wind stirring up and reanimating old ideas like humility, justice, prudence, courage. That same spirit breathed through Jesus, who lived in the power of that holy breath, stirring up the stagnant structures and constricting traditions of his day. He breathed in all the hypocrisy, bitterness, oppression and violence that surrounded him, but kept on breathing out peace, truth, blessings even as the storm of imperial and religious violence swept over him. And that same spirit on the darkest of days, at the deadest of ends, breathed new life into his broken body, an affirmation of our creaturely existence, a vindication of love, a promise of God's future for all those truly spiritual, those who breathe in sync with Jesus. And so if God's spirit can raise the dead, then no matter how dire our situation, no matter how dirty our political context, no matter how becalmed or powerless we might feel, hope can never be entirely smothered. And where there's hope, there's not just comfort in the face of a broken and weary world, but a disquieting desire for a world made new, a restless force that won't accept stale air. Come, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us, breath of God. Breathe into us. Breathe through us. Breathe in. Breathe out.